So here's the goal of today. If possible, we'd love to get through two different lessons. Now, these first three homework problems come from 714, and then these come from 715. 57 is important for the fact that it is, um, if you haven't already looked stuff up in your book as you go through homework. Um, I had a couple of people last week that came to me. They're like, oh, Mr. Hudson, what's uh, interquartile range or what? And I, like, especially at this point in the year, I'm going to start to say, like, look it up. You have a glossary. You have a great resource with your textbook. You've got the ebook. You've got everything else. So by look it up, I don't mean go Google it. I mean, use your book. It's a quicker resource than anything else, pretty much, that you have. So, like, for example, um, sorry, I'll leave this up because I know some people are still filling out their plan book. So, if I go to our book, and I go to reference, and I go to the glossary, and let's say the question that you were wondering about is interquartile range, right, because that's a weird one. So, on the computer, if you don't know about this yet, you can hit Control F, and that's going to find on your page whatever word you start typing. So real quick, if you're filling out your plain books, I'm just going to show this real quick. If you show, hit Control F, it pops up this little bar. And if I start searching interquartile range, here we go. Calculated by subtracting the first quartile from the third quartile. Well, what the heck does that mean? Maybe I need to search quartile and figure out what a quartile is. So I go to quartile, and I want to go to the first one. So that, okay, so box plots use quartiles. So this lets me go through what iteration or like what occurrence of the word. So quartiles found 17 times in this glossary page. So as I go down through, it highlights in orange the different times. That, so guys, you need to start to get familiar with how you can look things up and find your own information. Then, if you have tried to look it up and you still can't figure it out, that's when you want to come to me and be like, look, okay, I've already tried the glossary. I've already tried, like, help, which I will totally help you. But if you've not tried to help yourself yet, like, that's a problem. So, I think I just lost our, oh, we're here. Equations with fractions. And also I realized um, it's sometimes hard for me to make assessments and decide what all should be on what assessment. Um, so I think a couple of the problems that I gave you on that last test were potentially too hard. Um, and we need to like do some more teaching before we try to do the corrections for that. Um, so that's the other reason why I'm not giving you that other worksheet today. Because um, I wanted to do a couple more days of class first. So are we good on plan book and all that stuff? Notice I've changed the piece head out so it's more specific. So graph paper with header. right? At a minimum, that's the first thing you should care about. What's on my desk? I show graph paper with a header. It could be in a binder, it could not be in a binder, I don't care, but it needs to be organized when you're done with class. Two math books per group, so you're not just locked into what's up on the TV or up on the smart board. And then highlighted post-its, etc., anything else that you want. So I often use highlighters when I'm doing math or post-its. If you're like me and you want to like flag something in your notebook. So, fraction and decimal coefficients for our equation. And guys, if your book isn't back there, somebody else probably grabbed it. Just grab whatever. Um, I need to figure out when we're going to bring all the books back here, but at this point, I'm almost kind of just waiting until we get new books in. So we can reorganize everything. Um, so, Simon, don't worry about getting your book. Just grab a book. So. hear you at least when you say it say it instead of just like squelch it so what is a coefficient I guess we should probably know first if I show you these tiles right here and I talk about what we have we have one x squared tile and one x tile Coefficients is a fancy word for multiplier. So a coefficient is just a number or part of a number, like three fourths or 0.75 or one half or whatever, 
that tells you how many or how much of something you have. A coefficient is just a fancy word for multiplier. So if we were asked to find the perimeter of this rectangle, an x squared tile is called an x squared tile because this is x length and that's x, x length, which means it's a square of length x, x squared. But if this was four by four, that doesn't mean that the square is four. The square would be 16, right? It goes four wide and four tall. So this is an x tile because it's one wide and x tall. With your group, and you should only need like, you know, 30 seconds or so, figure out what is the perimeter of this rectangle. The perimeter of this rectangle. Have we already had homework problems like this? Um, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry. It's, I forgot you guys get exposure to it. Okay, so apparently we don't need much time at all. We have x here, x there, x there, and x over here. So we have 4x plus two, right? But if I go to write it out, different of us might write it differently. What if I wrote 3x plus 2 plus x? Is that okay? Yeah. It's not wrong. It looks different, but it's not wrong. What about x plus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus x? Why just making it difficult? It's just not simplified. Okay, it's not simplified. What about Hello. Hello. Now, can anyone explain that to me? Why we would write something like that? Right? Like, why would somebody write, like, why do I have a minus 2x there? I'm talking about perimeter, but I just normally add stuff up, right? So I'm confused. Yeah, Justin? Um, so if, if, if you were to find something that was, like, in the perimeter of the, like, your whole square, kind of thing, it would make that, but, like, add, like, subtract the two squares and whatever. If I do the original perimeter of this square, that's 4x. The original perimeter of this rectangle is 2x and 2. But then we don't use these. So minus 2x. That would still be right, even though it's awkward. That's what they did, exactly what Jessica said. They looked at each of the perimeters for the shapes, but then they took away the thing they don't use. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, moving on. If, instead, we have partial amounts, we can use fractions for our coefficients, such as two-thirds of x squared. So, we are wondering if we're there yet. And actually, I forget what problems I wanted to do today. Yeah, we're doing 39, but we're skipping down to 42. So, we're on a trip, right? And the infamous question that you should not ask your parents, are we there yet? So, my dad, and this is true story, my dad would love to answer that question in, like, the way that would take us the longest, like, shot us up for the longest, essentially. So, often it would involve handing me a map that I didn't quite understand how to read, which is how I got better at reading maps. But, so... Lydia's dad is the same way, right? He says, no, but what I can tell you is we've traveled a hundred miles and we are two-fifths of the way there. Very complicated way of saying, no, we're not there, zip it. So, Linda, sorry, I think I said Lydia. Linda sets up that. Her brother sets up this. And of course, Linda's like, dude, you are stupid. And he's like, no, I'm really not. You just don't get it. So, with your group, figure out how we could determine the entire length of the trip, slash, 
because this will get you there, how much we have left. Okay? So if they travel 100 miles and that is two fifths of the whole trip, how far do they have to go total or how much further do they have to like figure out the solution to this problem? I'll give you uh, like two or three minutes. Tried too hard though. I mean, you got everything right, but you put a lot of effort into that. Uh, Chloe, what'd you guys do? You get used Linda also. Anyone use Lee's method? Yeah, Quinn. Um, I kind of understand the method because of the interactive stuff I don't want to do. Okay. So what they've shown us right here, this 100 is two-fifths of the x. Two-fifths of x is 100. But what Quinn says is if I want to go the other way, I multiply by 5 over 2. Everyone please write this down on your paper. Two-fifths x equals 100. And we're going to put the 100 over 1 just to make life easy. So we have fractions relating to fractions. What can we multiply 2 fifths by to turn it into 1? Marley? 5 halves, right? Just like if I'm going the other direction, enlarging the triangle, all I need to do multiply this by 5 halves. Now, wait a minute. I can pull George's method in, too. Or, or Linda's method. What's 100 divided by 2? 50. What's 50 times 5? 5. 250. And x, because this becomes 10, this becomes 10, that's just 1x, right, equals 250. What do you mean that's so long? We set up one equation to multiply by the reciprocal. All right, we're moving on to 42. I know we did skip a lot. We're going to skip a lot today. 
42 looks at the why in the world did we just do that? Oh, yeah. I want to make sure that we touch on something because you skipped this chapter in the Math 7 work. When they set up two-fifths x equals 100, if it was just like 2x equals 100 or 5x equals 100, you would very quickly just tell me, oh, divide, right? To turn a number into one, we just divide by itself. So if we set that up in here, we can do the same. You can take the two fifths, divide by two fifths, two fifths divided by two fifths will get you one. So we actually, whether you like it or not, oh, no. made, well, and I know, I had to go around to capture the, the two fifths and not the X, but it's a giant one, right? Which you guys got taught about last year. Any number over itself, even fractions over themselves, equal 1. So this just turns into 1x, but the problem becomes we have 100 divided by 2 fifths. But we could. We could. Ah, so we can then keep, change, flip, and we get the same thing that we just did. So this is why, and Gwendolyn, if we took this method, this would be like a lot of work. But this is why we take the shortcut and we just immediately multiply by the reciprocal of what we started with. Yes. You guys, that's the same thing that we're doing. Imagine if this said 8x equals 100. And we divide by 8. That's the same thing as multiplying by 1 8. Multiplying by the reciprocal, it's the same thing. Remember, because division's made up, right? It's a manipulation of multiplication. And manipulating Math is just all about manipulation. It really is. Uh, 42. Try. Uh, no, we already pretty much did that because you guys are awesome. Awesome. Try 44. I'm going to give you, let's do two minutes. Do 45 seconds, uh, 40 seconds each. Try ABC on 44 there, and then we will move on to our next lesson. Our next lesson? Mm -hmm. Wow, we are Compressed 7 8, right? we got to compress them. <laughs> Now, my advice, flip B around when you write it down. I always write the X value on the left side. So I would write that as 2 sevenths X equals 12. We are now trying to practice that reciprocal multiplication. Okay, we're trying to practice that reciprocal multiplication. I'm just confused. Make sure you write out the original, not just the work that you're going to do, because that will let you catch any mistakes that you might make. It doesn't work. Um, did you split it up into two different steps or what? You said you found it interesting that I didn't. Yeah, I found it interesting that I didn't. Well, it's just the same way that we can find it. I don't get the standard form of it in my class. Simon, what do we multiply by to turn the nine halves into just a one? Two ninths, yeah, it's reciprocal. So we multiply by two ninths over here. And we gotta do it on both sides. We get just x. I wonder if that we do equals fifty-four over nine. Oh no, oh, well, that works out nice. It's six. It's up on the TV. Don't flip out when you look up here and it's gone. If I write my two sevenths first, 
Uh, Caitlin, what do I need to multiply by here? What do I need to multiply by to turn the two sevenths into a one? Yeah, the reciprocal, which here is seven halves. Careful how you say that. Now, here's another shortcut. This one doesn't matter, right? Division by one doesn't matter. What is 12? Now, be careful. I'm not multiplying. 12 divided by 2, right, because this is on top and that's on bottom, so that's division. 12 divided by 2 is 6. What's 6 times 7? 42. I can quickly find out my answer of 42. Now, if you did the multiplication, you would have gotten 84 divided by 2, which is the same thing. So you could cross-reduce right here. Right, This becomes a 6, and this becomes a 1. And 6 times 7 is 42. What did I do? <laughs> Not even close. So, Braylon, if you know some basic Spanish, preguntas is question. I will tell you one of the most important Spanish phrases if you are going to travel anywhere that might be Spanish speaking is donde están el baño? <laughs> where is the bathroom? Oh, you were ready. Where is the bathroom? I say, I'll find it on my own. Don't ask Or, play all your albano. May I go to the restroom? <laughs> Dangerous question. Dangerous question. We're going to go class answer on this. What do we multiply by in C? Class answer, anyway. Negative four thirds. I said it right. So be careful. When I do that on the left, I know what happens over here, right? This is going to just all cancel out. And this becomes X. But then multiply by negative 4 over 3. What's going to happen with my answer? Gonna be negative. What's 21 divided by 3? Seven. What's 7 times 4? 28. 28. 28. Oh, I did a thing. This is easy. Hence why we're done with that lesson. Yeah. So squiggly cross your paper. Squiggly cross your paper or you can straight line if you really want. Label 715. Shoot, I did not have it open apparently, but maybe I did something else with it. We work by ourselves. Um, I mean, give me a minute to check what it is. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Wait, wait, Raylan, that's a good idea. Then we can do a team bonding. No, we're not being creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We. Have decided, and th this is honest, we've decided that service learning being one of the components of Phoenix is something that we don't do well in. Right? And like if I say service learning, a lot of you are probably like, well, what is service learning? Um, if that doesn't work, Simon, I got a handheld sharpener up here. That is better, and it's a pig, so you know it's cute. Um, so, we decide, for a discovery opportunity, we're going to go do some help with Habitat for Humans. Okay, they both have oh, okay, I'm making this part up now. Now we could do this, but there's some policies about you guys being kids. Um, but if you want to do that, if you're interested in that, start looking up Habitat for Humanity builds and figure out if there's anything close. Um, hey, I need your attention. I need to be able to tell a story, and like, or else we can just go by the textbook, but that's lame. Um, so we plan our discovery day, and four sevenths of the seventh grade class goes and helps with this habitat for humans. They were able to paint 
nine apartments. Right? But that was only four sevenths of us. So Habitat is like, man, you guys are awesome. Can you come back again? And we're like, actually, conveniently, sure. And we make this part of our end of the year where we are all going to go together, every single seventh grader, and go work for Habitat for Humanity. So what fraction of seventh graders would that be? Sevens. Seven sevens, right? So here's my task for you. With your team, figure out how many apartments that entire seventh grade group could paint and then be able to explain it using this visual. So I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes. So explain, because you obviously I know you could set up an equation and then tell me what to do to solve it, but why? Why does this make sense? So I did not print these for you because, again, I'm trying to save our printing costs. Um, and it would have only been useful for like five minutes, and then it's just a piece of paper that we wasted. So how can we make sense of how many apartments our whole class could paint in a day when we know that four-sevenths of our class can paint nine in a day? So what we have is, and we could use like P, if we want to say like Phoenix, four-sevenths P equals nine. And this is in your book. The, the beginning of that little work page thing, but I'm going to stick it up on here. So I'll capture this, put it up on the TV, and then I'll put the visual. All right, I'll give you guys at least two minutes. So it is kind of weird that, it, and that's why I was, hey, if anybody still needed the homework, I'm going to put it back up there so you guys can see it again because I know it was kind of weird. It's the evens of the first lesson, but then what we do in 715 is a little bit weird. So, so pay attention to that. These three are from 714. The other three are from 715. That's why it's both homeworks. Oh, yeah, probably. If I'm being honest. So I, the, and this is interesting with the high school class that I teach. If I know you're doing what you need to do, why do I need to spend everybody's time and effort to like check it? So that like in the past, if everybody masters a test, I don't even put it math. It's just like, what's it matter? I mean, and then, uh, so I have also had, when I try to do that, somebody's like, but my parents, like, they need to see that, like, I have good grades. I'm like, okay, well, that I get. But really, like, feedback is just to inform your learning. So if my feedback is, great, keep it up, it's like, okay. Like, that doesn't help anything. If my feedback is like, hey, you need to be careful when we divide the fractions because you did it, that's helpful. So um, four and five got it pretty well like on the chapter test, and I think I made the test a little bit too hard, which is on me, that's okay. Um, but like, I'm always trying to push you guys and see where we're at and what we struggle with. So now I knew we struggled with this a little bit. We needed to practice it, and I wanted to put some really good time into it. Well, the point of practice is for your benefit, not for my benefit, right? So like, now, I will be collecting chapter seven homework. So hear me when I say that, like, yeah, I might not have collected the four or five, and I might not ever, but I will be collecting the chapter seven. Um, I'll probably do a collection here at the end of this week. You're the only class that I have this week that is not scheduled to take a test this week. Um, but, I, but I'm debating on whether we do like a mini mastery as like with a review game sort of thing. Um, like really just like a check in and mini mastery doesn't even mean like that the grade matters It just means like we're gonna act like if you needed to show mastery on this The whole point of a mastery is if you now needed to show mastery like I told you guys last week I now needed to try to show mastery of cutting down a tree. It didn't go very well I got a progressing but luckily my neighbor's a nice guy and it, Like it's okay that I got a progressing but I now know I'm not mastered still so practice some more 
Yeah. Maybe not when there's yeah. only a 12 foot gap between the houses. That is yeah. super dangerous. Yeah. 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 You gotta be able to get to the top though, and then whatever you cut off the top falls. So the real trick with cutting down a tree, say that this was the tree, right? Like this is the tree. You cut a little V in the side that you want it to fall. And then your other cut on the other side comes in at a sharp angle. So this is gone, right? And if my sharp angle cut comes in like that, right about there, when there's still tree left, you can pull it from the top. And like this works like a hinge and it just lays down. It doesn't like fall uncontrolled or like, so you have ropes coming off the back of people like, like keeping tension and then somebody's pulling this direction. So actually they're letting the rope go this way slowly. That's how we did it. All right, but can anyone explain this visual to me? What's this side show? If I like just look at the top part, what's that show? Four sevenths and nine, right? So what if I do that? Eight sevenths and eighteen. Okay, but can I take eight sevenths of the class? No. Oh, you can take the teacher. I can't do that. All right, I'll wager a piece of candy on this. Can nobody make sense of what we could do with this visual? cut it in half. Like, wouldn't that just be like here? Yeah, oh, so if I do, like, if I cut in half, like, yeah, so I cut that in half. Okay, so I could move two of, but that still isn't really what I want, right? I can't do two more. I need three more of these. Then, then, then you cut it in half again. Cut it in half again. Man, that yeah. gets really complicated though. Like half of the half. Sorry, that line should be through the middle. Anybody else? That would work. I'm not saying it would not work. That would work, but that's complicated. George, you had your hand up. Anything else? So we said, and I don't know why you raised that line. This is eight seven. Right? What about this? 12 sevenths. Still not that nice. What about this? George, you got an idea? How many sevenths is this? 16, right? So 20 sevenths, 24 sevenths. So check this out, guys. If I look at everything on the right side, I have 28 sevenths. Now, can I take 28 sevenths of the class? No, because this would actually be four times what we have. It's four phoenixes, right? But, so that's four P, or whatever we're saying. How many apartments, then, does that end up being? 63? Right, so if we took four phoenixes, or if we were there for four days, right, that'd be four times the amount of work, we could do 63. So instead, because we need to divide by four, we can now divide by four, and somebody said you get 15, 15.75. That's the same as setting up four sevenths P 
equals 9, and then multiplying by the reciprocal. Here's what we did. We multiplied by 7, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we divided by 4. So we multiply by its reciprocal to make an entire grouping, like one that you know comes out nice, the 28 sevenths, you like that visual model, the whole grouping, right? Then we got to divide it by 4 after that multiplication happens. So that's why, right? I never want to teach you the what without the why. The why reciprocal multiplication works is this visual right here. Questions? I really want like a ticket sign. Um, Uh, we should back to this, I guess, today. Don't. Those are had to get to today. We can get Solve for x. If we know two thirds of x is eight, you're mowing the yard. You've gotten paid two thirds of what you will get because you've gotten done two thirds of the yard. And your dad's like, I'm not giving you everything until you do everything. But you're going to the movie right then. So he says, Well, two thirds of your payment is eight dollars. What would you then be getting in total? Man, as a kid, I would take this to mow a yard. This is fair pay. I think it's actually more than what I would pay you if you were my kid. Two ways. One way that might immediately pop into your head. Well, what is one third then? Four. Four. The other way that might pop in your head is multiply by the reciprocal. Either way, we get 12. Right? He's offering to pay you 12 to mow the yard. Now, this, this is where it switches gears into decimal coefficients. So that's where we're going to pause for today. You got five minutes left to work on your homework. So go ahead and dive in, get a paper out, head it real nicely for your homework, and just spend this time getting done as much as you can. I love fighting. Thank you.